found this stuff in a drawer, and I think we can make a DC motor with it. Flint dog science with me, Caleb Flint. Got a battery, got some sandpaper, got a little Sharpie, magnets. I cheated, I actually ordered these on Amazon. Some chapstick, lighter, definitely ordered that on Amazon too. Just put them all over here. One of those batteries is new, and the other battery is not new. Hopefully we choose wisely. At the end, if you're curious, I'll show you how the thing works. All right, step one. We have to get our little battery. I think we can put these on. I got two of them. They're not the same size, but you gotta make stuff with what you got. I'm gonna cut two strips with our little paper clips. We're gonna try to get them level. Our motor is gonna span that gap. And uh, oh yeah, welcome to Flim Dog Science. I'm Caleb, this is my science channel. Mainly my kids watch. <laughs> okay, there's one. If we get a little firmer connection on there, we'll get a better current flowing through this. So if you can push it on there pretty good, it tends to work a little better. Let's get the other one on. And I'm doing it with the little, these are clothespins with the little round side at the top. See the little round side there? Looks pretty even. We'll see. Great, that's wonderful. It's even standing. I didn't anticipate that. Terrific. Now we need the motor part that's gonna be spinning on the top. You can burn the ends. I love burning. I'm using, there's different gauges. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. It's 24 AWG. I don't know what AWG means. It's some kind of gauge. I've tried to make it with the thinner. I have better luck with a little bit thicker wire. The wire doesn't deform as easily. The 24 for this one tends to work pretty good. <laughs> until I try to show you and it probably doesn't work at all. I'm gonna burn it off. This is called magnet wire and this red enamel coating keeps the current from flowing through it. I'm gonna actually get a nice long stretch here. Uh-oh, losing my lighter. Trying to get it all nice and shiny. We want the current to flow very, very easily. This is just a little piece of sandpaper. I don't know if the grit matters particularly. Um, I also use steel wool for this, works great. Something rough. Let me see. All right, I think we're good. At the edge where it gets red right here again, where the enamel starts, I'm gonna get, you could probably use a battery or something. I grabbed this Burt's Bees chapstick. I'm gonna do 10 wraps. I've done 10 wraps and got it to work. So one, two, three, four, 10. Great. Now my other side wire, I'm gonna make just a little longer and then snip that with something. Scissors. These work really good. There it goes. We can slide off our wire and we're gonna try to loop it. I'm gonna loop it around like that. See, I just made a little loop. And now my goal is I want the wires to be on opposite sides. So right now they're definitely not on opposite sides. They're like bunny ears or something. So let's loop it around a couple times and try to get it to be opposite. Look at that, that's pretty close. So they're about opposite right there. I don't know whether to show you how to do it wrong or do it right first. Let's just do it right first. Why not that? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sand off half of this, and let's also make them even, right there. And then I'm gonna sand off just half the top half of the wire. That's that's a good like half of it sand. I'm gonna maybe do just a, a hair more. Scratching my little mat here. I'm not sure how well this will come through for you, but this side has the copper, and this side is red. What that's gonna do is make it so the current will flow through the wire when the copper's touching, and then the current will stop flowing through the wire when the red's touching. And that's what we want for a DC motor, at least this DC motor. I'll show you a variation if you want at the end. It's sometimes a little easier. Let's put these through the little holes here, like this, and then we'll have to straighten our wire again. Now let's get out our magnet. Amazon sells these, I think this was like a four. I like them to be about three millimeters thicker. They break easily. So I think these are the three millimeter, probably a six, an eight, and a 10 millimeter would be my guess looking at them. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what I got here. And one thing to note, I like getting these ones that have the little hole in them. You can make the homopolar motor a little easier. Okay, so I'm gonna grab two. Now let's see if this will go. Holy cow, <laughs> it is, the current is flowing. That was hot, cripes. Why does it get hot? There it is. Look at that, isn't that rad? 
Okay, if I can get it to stand, I don't know if I can get it to stand or not. I just think these are so cool. So I made one of these when I was in elementary school and maybe second grade and I lost to a fella in the science fair who did a rad science fair project on toilet paper. He did just a great experiment. All I did was make this little motor, which I think is cooler than toilet paper. Moral of that story is I didn't successfully get to make one of these until this year. They never really work for me because I didn't do this sanding trick at the edge. You see how it's sliding off to the, the side a bunch? It wants to just slide off. What I'm gonna do is a little trick that's gonna make it stay above the magnet. So I'm gonna put it above the magnet and then I'm gonna bend the wire and probably burn my fingers because it's so hot. And then I'm gonna bend this one opposite. There we go. That kind of holds it in the center. And if you once you get it where it's working pretty good, you can snip off the ends if you wanted. I'm not gonna do it today, but you could put some little fan blades on there and make yourself a little DC motor fan. Let me snip this. Oh, broke it. Little DC motor. Really good to know how DC motors work. Very common thing. Look at that. <laughs> wow, that one's really cooking and it's getting really hot. You can try different size magnets in here, see what that does to the spin, try different gauges, try different batteries, look and see how the current magnetism and your wire gauge shifts it. Also do different numbers of coils. All those are different variables you could do a science exper experiment on and um, maybe beat the toilet paper guy. Before we go, I forgot I told you I'd show you the Sharpie trick. So here's the Sharpie trick. This side that has the half rubbed off, what I'm gonna do is just take it all the enamel off. By the way, this is why I couldn't figure out how to make one of these successful for a really long time. It's because I always took off the enamel on both sides. So let me show you what happens when you take the enamel off both sides. It'll probably work and just totally destroy the point I'm trying to make. Had some students who theirs worked this year. I don't know why it worked. If you know why it would work when the enamel's off both sides, let me know. I'm not an electricity master. I just like learning stuff. Okay, so when we put it on, both sides are now rubbed off. Watch what happens. This is what happens. You see that? It just goes like that. Let me tell you the scoop. DC current. It's going across through a magnetic field. It gets pushed. When both sides are sanded, here's what happens. The current goes through the magnetic field and feels a force and goes around. And then when it gets on the other side, it feels a force and goes back this way. And then it feels a force and goes back this way. And it just keeps kind of going back and forth like that. So what we need is for it to go through the magnetic field, feel a force, and then have the current turn off. That will eliminate the force and just let a Newton's first law, inertia, let it go through until the copper touches again, going through the magnetic field and feels a force. And then it turns off and inertia turns on, off, on, off. It's great hand waving. Um, but anyway, the moral of the story is we gotta make sure the contact is off on one side. Let's do this. We're gonna take, probably killed the battery. I'm just gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna draw on one side. I've never actually done this, but I learned about it this year from a friend that I work with. All right, let's try it. All we did was put a little Sharpie on half of the copper. Oh, it's going. Can I do it, buddy? Yeah, it's going. Nice, it's kind of working. It's wanting to. Let me put a little more Sharpie on. That's crazy. Just putting Sharpie on one side makes it so the contact turns off so as it's going, it feels the force and then turns off when it gets to the Sharpie and then turns back on when it gets to the copper and then turns off when it gets to the Sharpie. So really a neat little trick. Allows you to sand both sides or burn off both sides and your motor still works. Fascinating. One thing I'm gonna say is I think it works a little better when you sand half versus Sharpie half. It was more consistent before. But it is working and that's interesting. <laughs> Stay curious and check out this experiment I'll put in. I'm sure it's fascinating also.